Oh, oh. oh. What? oh we're watching why, why, why are we watching why, it? That's from. Ah! Just, yeah, we're not showing that. It's a little much. I'm not. I only care about the guests. I don't care about you. Okay. I've already That's cared why for you. you left me at the circus. I left her at a circus. I did. I want to hear about it. Welcome mm -hmm. to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And we have Dr. Drew today. The late Dr. Drew. Uh, the late. Actually, the early Dr. Drew. That's why what I happened? came in and told you I was so stupid. I thought somehow it was at noon, and I'm chronically early. I got into this vicinity around 10 minutes to 11 and started driving around looking for up on Sherman Way looking for a coffee. Really, for 20 minutes. And then? And then I, I saw an email from Rich that I'm ready when you are, and I thought, uh-oh, I got the time wrong. I know it. So here we are. Sorry. So th that takes away the word chronically. Yes, it does. It, it, it does. It, Mostly I, early, yeah. but sometimes... I, I, no, no. I mean, chronically with the exceptions, and this is that exception. Here it is. Well, thank you. Chronically yeah. late. Yeah, I feel special that we were an exception. Uh, yeah. So uh, you, <laughs> you know, I, I hate late. I hate it. I, hate I, it? I have some OCD stuff myself, and uh, early is part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can, well hopefully you don't. Hopefully. No, no, I do. No, I do. I have some of it, but 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 you can't have some. I mean, you can't. That's the thing. I'm. I do a campaign right now, not to argue with you. But please, not, please. You want me to argue with <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're starting off with because an argument. I, I don't have a diagnosable disorder. I just. I said I have some stuff. I'm not. I don't have a disorder. No. So that's uh, that, that's. Uh, yeah. So the stuff that you have would probably be, um, uh, you know, neurosis. Your a, neuro a little neurotic yes. about things yes. being in order and things like that, and I'm on this. Uh, uh, campaign because people uh, have made OCD part of the vernacular. Yes. If you definitely have a diagnosable OCD. Yes. It is um, so... It's, it's, it's disabling. Disabling yeah. and debilitating. Yes. And um, it, it, it's one thing to want to always be early or want to, but if you believe that you being late or the fact that you're a minute behind yeah. is uh, going to destroy you, yep. so therefore you end up in the fetal position naked in your room, peeing in a bottle like Howard Hughes was, mm. that's OCD. Yeah. Being persnickety about, I just always have to be, uh, that's who I am and that's that's neurotic. And that's yeah. why, that's, so I'm not arguing with you, but no, I, it, it gives me a good platform to kind of espouse what OCD is and that people should, you gotta take care of it. Yes. You gotta, you know, at least get diagnosed. Yes, because listen, so what you're, what you're tilting at is something that's happening with many psychiatric disorders, which some of this stuff has entered narcissism, you know, anxiety disorder. This is all entered into the common lexicon now, right? And so people throw And these Tom around. Sandoval is not a narcissist? <laughs> He's not an, I wasn't, when I was on, I was on his podcast. That's what I'm yeah, referring and, to. And I was, I didn't have a sense that he was, I mean, you know, that he had a narcissistic disorder. I didn't sense that. Uh, and that's the point. This is the same exact issue. Because if you have a disorder, which is SMI, serious mental illness, it has to affect functioning. Work, school, finance, health, legal, how, uh, what did I leave out? Relationships. And if you're having functional problems in those areas, now you're into a diagnosable condition. And otherwise, it's just traits. It's just traits. Like you said, neurotic traits, this kind of traits. Okay. Kind of traits. So, the, but, um, and I also believe, and my other thing is, I, I've gone and spoke at Capitol Hill because insurance companies don't parody the same amount of support for mental health as they do for physical you, health. You can't imagine how bad it is. You can't imagine. No, I know. Well, dude, I, I, I got, I, so I worked in a psychiatric hospital for 30 years. You worked at what? In a psychiatric hospital for 30 years. What is your doc doctorate in? What, 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 so what do you? A, it's complicated. So, so I'm an internist by training, right? And, and during my residency, I started moonlighting in a psychiatric hospital. I ended up becoming their chief of medical services, became very skilled in the medical care of psychiatric patients. Got, so I was very, very interested in all that. And a lot of the medical problems were down on the drug unit, so I started spending a long time down there and uh, learning how to detox people and eventually became the director of that program. So I spent 20 years in an inpatient psychiatric setting running a, a comprehensive addiction service. And uh, it was sort of sitting at the crossroads of, med at the crossroads of medicine, psychiatry, family therapy, psych everything was there in the addiction services. And of course, I was asked to see stuff all over the hospital so I could see what else was going on there at the time. And uh, so I ended up being an assistant clinical professor of medicine and a clinical assistant clinical professor of psychiatry. So I taught psychiatry and medicine. 
So you're saying I don't understand what what the because I believe that you know this is a layman's probably stupid saying but mind over matter. I really believe that our and I'm using the wrong terminology but the organ of our mindset has a lot to do with how our body, you know, like they, they say that stress is a big uh, complication to, yeah. you know, to the, could in, that's why some people maybe get cancer yep. or, yep. or get other illnesses yep. or, or whatever. So if you could figure out how to control the mind and if you um, as a doctor, as a, as a medical, physical doctor, treat two patients exactly the same way and somebody has a much healthier mindset, mm -hmm. Um, there is a better chance that the person with the healthier mindset will heal faster, do better. I do better. I would agree. I would think so. Well, you, you don't think heal faster because maybe, I've, I've even seen, maybe. I've even seen, and, and I don't know if it's, if, if I'm being tricked by what I'm watching, yeah. but they have, um, done surgeries without anesthetics where they've, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's hypnosis or what it, what it was, but they yeah. were able to have somebody bare being cut open and repaired without being given an anesthetic. It, that has happened, right? I, I believe they used to try that with both uh, with uh, acupuncture and with hypnosis. And a friend of mine said he was in China, was studying what was going on back when China was just getting going, and they were doing surgery with acupuncture. So there are things about the nervous system that we can enlist in certain situations that can sure. That so can. I guess in 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 um, well, let's put it this way: the nervous system nourishes everything. It nourishes your entire body. When the nerve, if you cut a nerve to your arm, your arm withers, and it and the autonomic nervous system is deeply embedded in our in our organs and in it feeds into our brain these things we call feelings, and the feelings are affecting our thinking and our affects and our, as you say, your mindset. And so it's all interconnected. And the, the fact that we treat this organ, I'm pointing at the head, different than maybe this organ, the heart or the stomach, bizarre to me. It's bizarre. I mean, these are each organs, they have unique qualities and they should be treated just the same, treated. Except that the, the fact is that when, um, you know, you take an x-ray and you see a broken bone, mm -hmm or you see something going, a, a visual of something that's going on, it's much easier to get the insurance company to pay to fix and get rid of that, yeah. where there so, is no x-ray for my behavior. Well, so what happens is, so this is what I was fighting for years and years. I would, I would treat these extremely complicated patients that, you know, we had a reputation for being able to treat the sickest patients. So if you had multiple Who's medical, we? <laughs> uh, my, my program, the, the team I built. Uh, at the where, psych hospital where was it in Pasadena, Los Encinas Hospital? Okay. And uh, if you had seizure disorder and you were, you know, coming off drugs and you had tuberculosis and you had cancer, wh whatever it was, I, and you were psychotic, we could handle it, no problem. Um, but I would, <laughs> I would get these. In, the insurances would call day one to go get the patient out. Day one, the patient needs, I mean, conservatively, three months of care, uh, at least two weeks in an intensive environment to get them stabilized, get them out. And you'd end up talking to a clerk or somebody who had some clinical background on the other end going, no, it doesn't meet our criteria. It doesn't meet our criteria. Get them out of there. And the game was, then the patient would call and complain to the insurance company. They go, oh, Mrs. Smith, we don't, they're just Dr. Pinsky has to tell us what, what it is you need. And we'll be, of course, we're happy to cover it. What they don't tell the patient is they set their own criteria. The criteria are very arbitrary and have no relationship really with clinical reality. And I, of course, my patient needed lots of care, multi, multi-system issue, doesn't meet their criteria, psychiatric criteria. If I would tr use medical jargon, I could scare the shit out of them and they'd keep them in the hospital, even for minor conditions. They go, you know, I hear a whole, whole systolic uh, murmur in the you know, at the apex. And uh, I think they probably have a corded tenure and uh, you know, maybe some ischemia. Uh, uh, keep them in the hospital for more days. Fine, fine, fine. But if I said they're, they're coming off heroin, they're in the middle of withdrawal, they're craving, they've never had a sober day in their life. They're uh, a little bit, there might be a depressive disorder there. They're a little bit suicidal, but not actively. They'd go, yeah, yeah, send them home. So what's the answer? The answer is, I've been through three waves of so-called parity, which is what you were saying, that yeah. there is really not parity, which is exactly correct. It needs to, it's some way, and I don't know how you prevent the abuses of this, but in some fashion, the parity has to be 
the doctor is of the opinion that the patient needs three more days in the hospital, whether it is medical or psychiatric. And I work on both sides of it. On the medical side and the surgical side, they don't really argue with us. On the psych side, crush everything. Just because it's easy. You know, there was a there was a documentary done um, not too long ago. Oh, with that, we were just talking about this last night. Maya? Do you know that story? No. It's, um, is that the documentary? Taking Care of Maya. Taking Care of Maya. Mm. And she just won her case. Uh, she just won her case against the hospital for $220 million. Mm. But she John came, Hopkins. Yeah. She came in with CRPS, I believe, diagnosed CRPS. Which is, explain. What, what is CRPS? Uh, you're, you're using it. Tell me what CRPS. I don't what know. is uh, it? Chronic something pain syndrome. Oh, chronic, chronic regional pain syndrome. Yeah. Okay. Chronic Whatever. Regional. She was diagnosed by a specialist. They couldn't afford the specialist anymore. They yeah. ended up going to the hospital. The hospital didn't know how to um, help her. And they ended up thinking that it was Munchausen's right. by proxy. And they separated her from her parents. Then right. they said that it was fictitious disease. Right. Which is CRPS. Sometimes they throw it in there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then they and said she the, doesn't actually and, have it. And the whole um, while I'm sure they were, they were spooling her up on opiates. Right. Well, and they went back and they looked and the hospital was actually, even though they said it wasn't CRPS, um, they were charging the insurance companies yeah, for treatment of stuff. CRPS. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. And that was the only way they were able to make the money. So it's but I don't a scam. know if that has anything to do with what you're. Well, what I'm saying is that the you know it's a two way street. the the uh, the medical community mm. or hospitals or or pharmaceuticals want to overcharge and make money. It's for profit, mm. and the insurance company wants to make money by charging you for this coverage. Mm -hmm. But um, I saw a documentary once where they get a um a stipend mm -hmm. for not for being able when when a, a claim comes in yeah for finding a reason not, not to yeah it's it's a called a risk pool they so they hang out as much as they can and give you as little access to as much as they can and you take a certain percentage right off the top and put it in a bond fund so it's a mess and the, the, i've been fighting my entire career to try to first of all, they've adulterated the physician-patient relationship. They've superimposed a bunch of stuff on top of it. What does that mean? They, they've they made it impossible for us to, to care for patients. I think I just pulled my headphones out. Something. Did you? There, somebody, we, go. there we go. Oh, you're good. Uh, and it, it's, I, I'm really at the point where I'm thinking we have to run up the white flag. We, we lost as doctors. We have no control over the care of our patients. We really don't. We have very little control. And what control we had, now it turns out 70% of us are employees. So they're listening to whatever their employer tells them to do. That is not how medicine is practiced well. Somehow we have to find a way to... So the, 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 your most efficient unit is a properly trained caring physician and a, a informed, motivated patient. That's it. Doesn't get better than that. That's your most effective unit. You do anything to that, you're screwing it up. You're making it worse. They've completely adulterated the doctor side with you know, us working for insurance companies and hospitals. And it, it's so ridiculous. And pharmaceutical companies, as you mentioned. We so that a, a doctor working for a hospital is not um, motivated by uh, treating the patient with the best possible care? Look, they, he or she is for sure. But look what happened with COVID. From on high, they handed down, send, yeah, I make them go home, send them home. Tell them to come back when their uh, PO2 is 80. That was astonishing to me. What do you mean? They sent people home without care a lot. Was it, wasn't wasn't that had, not because they were overwhelmed? It was they didn't want to become overwhelmed. They didn't want to become infected. And they were told from on high what to do rather than what they wanted to do. And they just did it. They just complied. Wait, what, can it, I it, ask you then, do you believe in socialized medicine or a two-tier system? What I, do you think the fix I think, is? I think the fix is a tiered system of some type because people are always going to want to be able to go to the market and get whatever they need if they can afford it. They just want to do that. But if you, you there's got to be some other way of doing this than the way we're doing it. One of the things that make insurance is like a um, utility where they just are regulated completely and can't do what they want to do as a business. Because as a business, their priorities are messed up. They, but the, they, the same as the pharma, pharma business. 
Well, pharma, yeah, pharma's, you know, the the relationship between the regulators and the pharmaceutical industry. I didn't know. I COVID exposed so much for me. A naive me. I'm just practicing medicine. I don't think about it. I didn't know so many of us were employees. I didn't know that all the FDA officials go on to be pharmaceutical executives and vice versa and the CDC and they go back and forth. It's wild that relationship. It is it is so adulterated. You've been very vocal about your opinion on the way we handled COVID from like being very staunch one way to issuing an apology and then you're still being very vocal about how we handled it and all yeah. that stuff. So, yeah. how do you feel now about COVID? I know before you were uh, very I, my my <laughs> The reason I apologize is because my family started getting de death threats. And I'm happy to apologize if I got something wrong, and I'm sure I got some stuff wrong, and so mm -hmm. I apologize for it. But when you look back, I got just about everything right, it turned out. But people said I was So wrong. you're rescinding the apology. I, no, I'm happy to apologize. <laughs> no, don't don't get his family people. in trouble. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm plus, just I've, I've a, I don't understand. I apologize. I, I was hubristic. I was over my skis. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make a point, which yeah. was, my point was, and, and I overstated it. I started, I, I made a bunch of errors, and I apologize for that. But what I my point was at the time was, we just had a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that we'd had a pandemic just before COVID? Are you aware? No. No. Nobody was aware. What mm -hmm. was the pandemic? H1N1. And it killed 300,000 people. And you don't even know it happened. And we had a pandemic. And my point was, yes, this one is going to be bad. It's going to be worse. But isn't there, I mean, do we, have, we have to go from nothing to complete disaster. I there seems like there was an intermediate zone. And but, I kept but saying- But here's what I will say. I'll ask you as a layman. Wait, yeah. I want to hear what you and, and okay. Just, you know, at the end of every of those statements, what I kept saying was, please just listen, listen to the CDC, listen to Dr. Fauci. They will get us through this. Just okay. calm down. Stop this. Don't listen to the press. Don't listen to the New York Times. Listen to those guys. Now, they got all <laughs> panicky too. I didn't know they were going to get quite over their skis the way they did. But I worked, I was deep in the AIDS epidemic. I was deep in that. That's why I got right. involved in radio was because of AIDS. Right. And I, Fauci was my hero my entire career. My entire right. career. So you were saying, I'm sorry. No, I didn't want to stop you. Uh, I'm sorry if I, if I interrupted. What I was saying was science yeah. is an evolution. It's a and procedure. Yeah. And continues to be an evolution. Always. What you Always. Do. So what I found fascinating and scary was whether it was Fauci, you, anybody who had a microphone or had a soapbox, when they said this is what needs to be done. Yeah. First of all, the uproar for whatever needs to be done yeah. is not worthy of an uproar. Yeah. And when that changes, it's not you're wrong. It's we learned more. Yeah. We, you know, uh, uh, nobody's getting that uproarious when you hear, you know, coffee's bad for you. Coffee's good for you. You shouldn't have wine. Now we can have wine. Now, you know, you know, when it, and the truth of the matter is that COVID, maybe for the average healthy young person without any uh mitigating you know yeah Medical underlying yeah. you know yeah. they were possibly okay the flu kills a lot of people h1n1 kills a lot of people but this was you know in in the, in the uh, rest homes and things like that it was oh, yeah. killing people oh. like crazy yeah and i think what people forgot was it's not only about you and we don't we don't think about us mm -hmm. And my biggest fear on COVID was not that I would die, not that I, that I would give it to somebody that mm -hmm. would die. And mm -hmm. I don't want to be the one that gives you that, sure. that passes that along. So I don't know why everybody got so angry and political. And Well, the, the, the part that's lingering is the part where the people that had an opinion, not just crushed alternative opinions, but destroyed people's lives. I know extremely decorated academics and professors that lost their jobs have destroyed their lives because they raised their hand and said, I, I'm not sure this is what there, there might be a better way to do this. That's all they said. I think we have a better way to do this. Let's really focus on the elderly people. Let's think about, you know, then no, you're, you're, you're destroyed. And those people are pissed now. <laughs> they still remain pissed because they were really, that was a miscarriage of, um, did you of, have an opinion science. that has changed? Uh, okay, this is the commercial for... Butcher Box. Sorry, I wasn't even... <laughs> Butcher Box. We're in a commercial. Well, it's confusing because Kenny's playing his... Uh, 
This is his. Oh, his trip video that we saw. I don't know why this is going. This has ago. nothing to do with Butcher Box. Butcher Box is better than Kenny's trip. Butcher Box is an opportunity to get really good food, really fresh food, really high quality food delivered to your door without going shopping. They do it all for you. Hassle free, stress free, especially for me because I have kids and I've mentioned a bunch of times I hate taking them to the grocery store. It is no fun. So now it just shows up at your door and I know that they have high quality meats and fish and organic chicken and that I'm feeding my kids good stuff. So I personally love it and I personally use it and I think you should too. I like chicken parmesan, thinking of Italy. More than, yeah. <laughs> Even though this is Hawaiian music. Yeah. But the, the truth is this is the ultimate convenience, okay? It's delivered right to your doorstep, free shipping always and uh, curated to customize box plans so you can get whatever kind of stuff you want. And it's got an incredible value. It really does. So, and uh, there's exclusive member deals. How do they get it? How do they get it? This Black Friday, your search for amazing deals on high quality protein ends with Butcher Box. They're offering their best deal of the year. Choose your free steak for a year. Choose between two New York strip steaks, filet mignons, or ribeyes to get free in every single box for a whole year when you join. For Cyber Week only, you will also get $100 off your membership with $20 off your first five orders. You could sign up today at butcherbox.com slash Howie and use code Howie to choose your free steak for a year and get $100 off. That's butcherbox.com slash Howie and use code Howie to get this special Cyber Week deal just for you. We'll do it. This Hawaiian music is driving me nuts. Kenny. Okay, here's another commercial. And again, Kenny's showing us his vacation it video. It doesn't stop. It, it doesn't, doesn't stop. stop. But you know what I love as much as Kenny's vacation video? What? Uncommon goods. You know, I like it too because <laughs> you know what you're doing? Not yeah. only, th these are great little things that are kind of like handmade. They're made by real artists. Not just little. There's big things too. No, I know, but it's, it, uh, they're creative. Yeah, and you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. I actually got two things from there recently. I got Alex Don't Listen, but your birthday present was from there like a whole whiskey making kit because i know that he's like a bartender and so i got some holiday it. gifts oh and i got something really cool for riley too my sister i got this candle that after it burns then you plant something and it becomes a plant and she loves it so there's gadgets there's art there's jewelry there's Stuff so much kids. and our listeners and viewers get 15 percent off your next gift you go to on uncommongoods.com slash howie that's uncommongoods.com slash Howie for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. See what they did there? Just mm -hmm. like his vacation video. It's not ordinary. It's not good. He's special, it's Kenny. Like Kenny. It's special. Okay. Did you have an Upside. opinion that has changed? Uh, my opinions change all the time. Yeah, for sure. Just like you're saying. It changed all the time. Uh, I... Um, I, I'm, let's see, how would it have changed? I probably was more concerned about young people in COVID than I should have been, uh, right. given the data. I vaccinated everybody aggressively. Um, I, I had an opinion about the way we rolled the vaccine out. I think that was kind of odd and weird, and particularly in California, it didn't make sense, and it did not specifically service the people at risk. Uh, and... Well, didn't, yeah, I, it, oh, didn't they roll it out where the older it, people were first? We, it, I remember we not taking really. That. It was sort of more communities at risk, and it wasn't clear what that should be and who. And it was almost hospital by hospital had different policies. It was right. very weird, and and frankly, a hospital I was involved with just did a terrible job. And I was running around trying to get the vaccine, and I got COVID trying to get the vaccine. And in any event, the and I was taking care of COVID patients and th this group that we were trying to protect. Uh, it, the other thing is, you know, I still, I vaccinate my elderly patients and I boost them. I, and I, the benefit is clear to me. It's absolutely clear that we have really, we did something extraordinary in terms of protecting the at-risk population. If I'm 25 years old, though, the risk of COVID now is is zero. It's 0. 0.00000, maybe one. Risk of myocarditis is 1 in 800 or maybe one, let's say 1 in 5,000 just to be conservative. 
that's I, the risk reward isn't there. So I don't understand the excesses we're getting into. That's the part that seems again. The, whenever we get into, we really only want to. I'm I'm fascinated by the uproar and the outrage, even on the other side. For example, I have been seen on this podcast mm. a number of times deciding mm. to wear a mask for whatever reason. I do have a personal reason with my family that I decide to wear yeah. a mask at times mm -hmm. when I feel like it's necessary for me but there's also people that maybe they have ocd and it makes them just feel better to yeah. wear a mask whatever it may, may yeah. be and i get the most hateful comments oh, about just wearing a mask huh. so it's been demonized and people and politicized so that people so are just crazy. attacking for a simple thing like wearing a mask that doctors have done for decades now let's let's talk about masks. So so the the reason we wear a surgical mask is mm -hmm. so the bacteria in our mouth don't fall into a surgical field. Not so respiratory viruses which are aerosolized, they get in easy through mm -hmm. through a surgical mask. They just they're completely ineffective. You have to wear an N95 mask, right? Oh, this is an N95. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to do it, and they probably get more upset with you for wearing that one because it's a little more obvious, but that's the one you wear mm -hmm. and you wear it at, you know, whenever you're at risk, without exception. Mm -hmm. So if I go in a room with a patient with typically tuberculosis, but that does have some, the, the surgical mask does work a little bit for that. Let's say a respiratory pathogen, I go in the patient's room and I'm put on infectious garb. I'm not going to take that mask. I'm not going to lower I'm going to keep it tight around my nose the entire time. And if I so much as open it up and air escapes from my nostrils and you can see steam forming on my glasses, that's it. That, ma I, that virus gets in, period. These aerosol viruses just get in through these through these mechanisms, so you have to really wear them just so. And I think people get frustrated with people just sort of haphazardly wearing them because then what are you doing? I just I, I wonder what the people are doing when they wear them that way. It's just like what are you doing exactly? But what like she's that? saying, and I agree with, and it's kind of what you were alluding to even at the beginning. If somebody has another opinion. Whether you agree with that opinion or not, and that's yeah. what's happening in our world right like now. Like your fist bump. I, I totally like agree. Like your fist bump. Right. Like if people think agree. it's stupid, who it's, cares? It's so loud. Or the <laughs> fact that even if you don't agree yeah. with anything yeah. that anybody is saying, the fact that there, that you have to read a death threat against your innocent family who yeah. has nothing to do with anything, does not affect their lives. Yeah. We live in a very scary world right now. We really do. I, I and, agree. And we're supposed to be a free society that uh, where, you know, I can, at, at best, I should be allowed to just disagree. Yeah. But I should not be allowed to threaten. No. And, and destroy and ruin and all that good stuff. And our world is really dark right well, now. And as a parent and as a grandparent, it's a really scary time. You know what I think it all is? I, I've become obsessed with this. And I've, I have found myself studying the hell out of... 1790 France and uh, early 20th century Russia because th this same thing happens every once in a while in history where people become hysterical. And it's um, what I think is one of the main liabilities for the mob hysteria and mob action and the aggression is the emotion of envy. Envy is alive and well right now. And envy is different than jealousy. Jealousy is, you know, I, you know somebody has something I wish I had, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And I go, ah, man, I don't like that, but I'll work hard to get it. Envy is, he's got something, he's got a car I like, it makes me, pisses me off, I have to destroy him. That's what envy is. Envy is I have to destroy the other person. And if you're in a mob, mobs love to gather and focus aggression on one person or one group and scapegoat them. And scapegoat Hey, you're is, speaking to the choir because, uh, you know, I'm a Jew <laughs> and we have been persecuted from our existence and that you know supposedly we're the ones with all the money and we're the ones that control everything there's the envy yeah but we're not even two percent of the population we don't really run everything i do fine but i would imagine most billionaires are not jews you know and most people that run countries and are, are not jews but for some reason there has been a focus on you know, us and the scariness that you're pointing out has is it's it's some weird hysteria. It feels like it all started with like Trump, and then it went to COVID, and then it went to Palestine. And it's the it feels kind of the same, but it's all ripped this this dressing off a wound or something, so we can look at it. I didn't even know this stuff was there. I really didn't understand how bad these 
festering emotions were, and yet they're writ large right now. I'm wondering if uh, social media is yes, uh, it's a big salt. Part. Oh, for I mean, I on rocket wanna, fuel. I wanted to ask you because you recently, I think it was yesterday or the day before, you posted something about free speech on platforms, on social media platforms. I assume that it's regarding Elon Musk's response, and then he he lost a bunch of ad dollars, right? So. I wanted to ask how you felt about that. Uh, glorious. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but but I thought, oh, somebody's pushing back. Because this is, I don't know about you guys, but I've been attacked. It's ne What you get attacked for is never what you say. Mm -hmm. It's always what somebody says you said or some manufactured aspect of something you said. It's really never a representation of what you said or did, in my experience, ever. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that whatever happened there, that he... It for sure wasn't what really happened the way they reported it. Have you ever heard of Gelman Amnesia? No. You know what that is? No. Gelman Amnesia. I know Michael Gelman, but I still remember him. <laughs> this is, uh, this is, Gelman Amnesia is a term that was coined to describe a certain uh, phenomenon. Gelman was a famous physicist, and he noticed that whenever he'd read an, a, a journalistic report about physics, it just was way off. It never got it right. But then he'd go re continue reading about complex politics and world events and assume that was all right. And of course, that's as off as anything else. And if you, whenever anybody writes an article about you, particularly an attack article, you realize how distorted the press is. It makes you, it really brings it home for you. But not only how distorted, what social media has done, each of us, each of us, live in a, no matter how open we are, we live in this bubble of reality that isn't like anybody else's reality. That's, and that's terrible, right? Because uh, I think systematically um, the algorithm, yep. you know, I mean, uh, the, the system yeah. is such that when you click on something and you have interest in, in a headline, you, you are virtually you know, changing your, al you're creating your algorithm. Yeah. You know, I just, I saw you, you know, Tom Segura, you know, I do a podcast with them over right. at your mom's house. And you know, Bert lives right over here. Do you know I've that? been to his house. Yeah, okay. I, I've done his podcast. Okay. I've done two bears. And, 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 okay. And I saw him, on, I saw Tom on two bears yesterday saying that his, his, it was his Instagram now has become some of the darkest material that humanity has to offer. It's just straight up homicides, essentially. And he goes, that's because I was looking at that stuff. And so it now because serves he's a Garth, it up. Because he's a Garth Brooks fan. He, he, well, he is, and he wants to know where the bodies are. So. <laughs> Do you know about that? No. Oh, Garth Brooks and, and Tom Segura have uh -huh. a, a feud because uh, he is uh, he has stated mm -hmm. that Garth Brooks is a, a which is a great movie is this um, he's a serial killer <laughs> Garth has kind of a funny affect they, they started with me like what's up with this guy what's wrong with him what's wrong with him what's wrong with him I'm like oh, he's a peculiar guy yeah I agree the affect's kind of funny but I, I don't know and then they went down the rabbit hole he must be a killer wouldn't that be a great movie where the guy's a big star. country star, a big star, <laughs> and then you find out he's the killer? I feel like that probably does happen. Well, so does Tom, and he feels it's Garth Brooks. <laughs> and now we just, I we'll never get it, I don't put it past him. I think it's a possibility. I'm just saying. I, I listen. I've been. I, I went working in a psychiatric hospital mm -hmm. all those years. I cultivated the word whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't know. I'm not, I'm not surprised by anything anymore. You're not surprised. What is the most surprising thing you saw in a psychiatric hospital? It's, it's most intriguing uh, in because I saw lots of wild stuff, but on the sort of intriguing, surprising side. I saw a couple of multiple personality disorder patients sort of early in my career where it was it was. Stunning how different the different person. I literally didn't understand it was the same person until one of the doctors pointed out because, oh, yeah, that was the one you saw a couple of days ago. And I was like, no, 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 that was a different person. No, same person. It was a different accent, different voice, different, uh, just everything. Uh, it's incredible. There have been studies where somebody woke up from like maybe a, a traumatic head injury or something and they speak another language Amen. or they come out of it. Has that, have I, you ever seen that? I, can't, I had long COVID, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I had a bad case of COVID. And, and whoop, whose what? phone? Mine? 
no. somebody's phone. No. Uh, 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 this Siri on my phone said, "I figured as much." <laughs> <laughs> why is my why am I being Your interrupted? Siri always answers. <laughs> always Stop interrupts. Yeah. Well, Siri, Siri, I did have COVID. I'm glad you figured that out. But I, I had a long COVID syndrome afterwards, and I had this weird sense that if I worked on music, language, or dance, it would clear. It was the strangest feeling. But I thought, well, I don't have patience with piano anymore, and certainly not going to dance. So, I, ah, we're going to Greece in the summer. I'm going to start working on language. And it came unusually easily. And when we got to Greece, people would always stop me and go, I, oh, my God, your accent is so good. It's so perfect. You, and you're speaking Greek. Right? Weird. COVID? I'm, I've never heard that. I, I, I wow. It may or may not <laughs> be true. Best side effect of COVID. It, it may or may not be true. It's all Greek but, to me. But some, it was a weird experience. Some people lose their sense of taste. Some people lose yeah. their sense of smell. You picked up. Greek? Uh, maybe she yeah. tried Chinese. That's yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. So if you had that weird vibe that, yeah. you know, music, dance, or language, yeah. and you go, I'm not going to do it, but it just happenstance yeah. that you were traveling and you picked up the language and you go, oh my God, this wasn't just a bizarre feeling. It was something. It, it is was something. It was something. But why, why so it came easily. <laughs> why aren't you dancing? I should go do Dancing with the Stars. Was because maybe you should. They should hear Let's that. If you're watching Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> okay. Next season, my, my shoulders are so matched up. I Would can't you do get my it? Hands up. Would you do it? I'm having stem cells into my shoulders in a couple of weeks, and if that why? works, then I would do it because I've destroyed my shoulders from weightlifting. I'm a big, big advocate of resistance training, but so much so that I destroyed myself. I <laughs> really much can't, I can't. I can't lift my arm over this. I can't do it. Th that you did to, to get into shape. You have uh, created an issue with your body that you yeah. can't lift your arms. Yeah. I well, think I, over resisting. Well, but it, you know what it is, is uh, these are my traits. And uh -huh. uh, I had trainers all over the years who are going, no, 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 you better do it this way. I'm like, ah, I just like the heavy pump, you know, you know. And yeah, I knew there'd be trouble. You ruined right. yourself. I, I'm going to make it back. I'm going to make it back. I've switched how I work out and stuff, and I'm much, much, much better. But I was very resistant. <laughs> You, what are you what are you promoting now what are you doing now you're doing you have a live stream on your own kind of network yes it's sort of uh at out of our kids playroom my, my wife during covid went we need to uh, we need to do something here and she got this idea with my guy that was my webmaster to go to do this live stream to kind of keep people updated on covid what was going on what you're hearing try to make sense of it for people because people are anxious and confused and I really, at the beginning, I felt like we were just like the French underground, just sort of like, just like uh, talking about things that people weren't allowed to talk about and trying to get everybody straightened out so they didn't go too, you know, people were, the hysteria was unbelievable. They would just go all one direction. They're still doing it, going all one direction, all the other, to hold two ideas in mind. Vaccine, good for old people, maybe a little risky for young, for a 25 year old male. They can't, they like can't hold those two ideas and you have to go, no, all bad or all good. It's, it's bizarre. Anyway, so that became that. And then we, I've started interviewing uh, a lot of professionals and people in this, in the particular people who were canceled. That's sort of where I started with doctors and researchers that were canceled because I wanted to hear what they had to say. And I learned something from every one of them, every single one. I learned things from your show. Hmm. I did. In fact, um, you're going to talk about After Dark now? We learned something. something. No. Uh, if you look over there, you see Kyle? You see yeah. Kyle sitting right there? Yeah. Does he look familiar to you? Yeah. I'll show you why. Roll the tape. Now. It would be good. Are there any more TikToks? Oh, yeah. Yes. I'll take, if not, I'll take the video question. This is After Dark. So. Oh. oh, yeah. Let's go over to those. Okay. Okay, watch if you're a butt doctor, please stop scrolling. Oh. If I have a cut on my arm and I place feces inside it, it will get infected. But if I have a cut or a hemorrhoid on my butthole, when feces slides past it, it does not infect it. Why does the butthole wound not get infected, but an arm wound would get infected if feces were placed inside of it? That's a Thank good you. question. It, is, it was a great question. I loved it. That's I why we it. hired him. And after we saw that, I hired him. There he is right there. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now there's a little code embedded in his question. And what do I, don't, you mean? I don't remember. I do so many shows that I'm out there. He said, butthole. Butthole. The, the, he's, he, he turned the two T's into sort of a, a barely a T. Say butthole. No, we can't uh, hear I, you. We can't hear you. Butthole. Oh, see, he said butthole that time. <laughs> Did you leave the T's out of the, your butt? 
Not intentionally. <laughs> okay. Because we've made note that, uh, and we've had many butthole questions over the years on After Dark, and women tend to say the word butthole without the T. They can say butthole. Why? Butthole. I don't know why. It just is the thing. Women and say he said butthole. it that way. He's one of the few men I've heard say that way. We have uh, Andrea is in that room. Andrea, could you come to the mic? <laughs> Andrea? Well, now everyone's conscious and aware of well, it. Well, maybe. We'll see. No. We'll see. Andrea, could you say... <laughs> Butthole? <laughs> butthole. Yeah, oh, she, the she, tea. I didn't hear the tea. The tea was a little light, but she came, she, tried leaned, again, she leaned on him leaned more than most Come closer to the mic. Well, now she's focusing well, now I'm on thinking it. about yeah, it. Don't think yeah. about it. Try not well, to say, think say, about it. What happens when you, rub, I don't know. when you rub feces on a butthole? <laughs> say that. <laughs> when I personally rub feces on my butthole. Okay, she no, said she a, that was enough of a tea. I would so anyway, okay. Well, we don't know how. That's it. not so a good gauge, though. An, she's been listening to this, and, and she's, she's thinking a, about it. I feel like that doesn't. She's actually. an orator, clearly. She has perfect diction, and she's erudite, and so wow. she's a weird butthole. <laughs> erudite. <laughs> you, you say butthole perfectly. <laughs> you say butthole. Wow. So she didn't Thank spill you. her tea. She's very talented. Right. Right. And so, <laughs> should we answer the question? <laughs> oh, do you want to? I don't know. Is that? The, 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 I yeah, think if it. I if I remember how I answered, I would still stand by it. Is that that, that is a highly specialized tissue down in that area, <laughs> and the, the, most, the most the immune system, the lymphatics, the thickness of the squamous layer is just all very very different down there, and it's not the same as uh, say a wound on your the arm. Squamous? Yeah. The squamous, the squamous. Do you layer? have the, the, any the other questions, there. Kyle? Yeah. Oh. Um, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Follow on. I, I was wondering, so like, you know, feces. Th this is going to be your highest rated show, just you know. <laughs> really? Just getting into this material. <laughs> okay. Really? I didn't know. I didn't know. From politics to, mm -hmm. to more politics. <laughs> Sometimes feces grows things like mushrooms, and if you eat them, you know, you can feel good and you. you see colors and you have a good but, time but that's not but the mushrooms and the feces the feces is just the environment for growth it doesn't affect the hallucinogenic properties of the of the mushroom okay yeah because if you eat the feces then you get sick so i was wondering why you get sick from the feces but not from those mushrooms did, did you the, the feet the mushrooms don't take up the feces and the bacteria in the feces that make you sick but most feces i, I mean they don't did you throw up after taking a, a, a feces-infected uh, mushroom once? No, or not, did you, not from the mushroom. Did you know somebody to take a... <laughs> you, or you just think if you were to eat the feces, you'd get sick. You're worried about that. You yeah. know that. No, feces... Okay. Feces, you know, you, you're going to be disgusted and have a... You might have a reaction to it in the what's called the chemoreceptor trigger zone of the brain where it just causes an emission. But it's not because it makes you ill. Okay, the, for the feces to make you ill, it has to have something infectious in it, okay. uh, like E. coli or salmonella or shigella or something or viruses. So what and you're saying is you can eat clean shit. You can eat shit. Y you well, it's oh man, you are getting into this after dark territory. You you want to go it? all the way? Mm -hmm. You can eat shit. W well, because people engage oh, well. in sexual practices, but whole play. Where why did you point to me? Because you said the word. <laughs> why did you, you point, point to my daughter? <laughs> she said the word. She when said, you say butthole play, you don't ahead of point me. at me, not my daughter. <laughs> so, and people put their <laughs> put their mouths there, and they don't get ill. But there are if you but but worldwide. <laughs> Oral fecal transmission of infectious diseases is the leading cause of infectious disease and death worldwide. It's just we don't so have COVID, a lot of that stuff here. So it didn't come from, it came from when they, COVID, oh. did it come from our ass? So no. if you're going to eat poop or someone's butthole, you do it here in the did U.S. Did you hear how she said it? You didn't use the T. I I didn't. No, <laughs> did you hear it? Play wow. it back. Can you play it back? Play it. <laughs> butthole, 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 butthole. Butthole. I swear to God, there's something here. All right. The, or not. Uh, there was no tea. But I was going to say, you should do it in the U.S. is what you're saying. Don't yes, go. Or in world, Western Europe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of uh, butthole, I don't know that you got, if, if you're aware of this, but I almost got canceled about a year and a half ago. Uh-oh. Uh, Welcome I got to the club. It's so fun. But I posted a picture. I posted a picture. It's above the, the thing there. I didn't know what, this is like in the midst of uh, COVID. I saw this picture, did not know, did not recognize what it was. I don't either. Good. Oh. So a doctor doesn't. Yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> I posted it. Why are there it so turns many out people it's that a, do? a prolapsed anus. Oh, yes, it is. Well, see, <laughs> they didn't know but that. I, 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 it looked like, to me, that 
that thing that's the prolapse just looked like a cerebral hemisphere, like a brain. Oh, and, he and thought it was a cupcake. I <laughs> love that you don't know your brain from a, your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. No, but, but so I didn't know what it was. My son, who is sitting right there, called me, uh, you know, an hour panic. later and said, Dad, uh, you've posted something on TikTok. It's, got, it's trending worldwide. Take it down. I lost a couple of sponsors and oh, I got- about the But you should have been <laughs> celebrated. Why? Why? Because you were, first of all- You were celebrated on H3. You were celebrated yeah. in you know, one H3, place. You know, I do. I've been many times in there. Yeah. yeah. And, and I used to try to make, help Ethan understand uh, Trisha. But uh, which when they were together, when it was the mm -hmm. frenemies thing. Uh, but I think the A, you're you're goofing around and you did something naive. And, it should, and if people actually cared about what you were doing, they should just go, hey, hey, come on, Howie. Let me help you this. Did you know that that's probably, as opposed to, oh, the outrage. We have this, we have grandiose outrage and grandiose caring right now. And that is not actually caring. That's just expressing your need to be seen and heard, which is a narcissistic. But impulse. it trended worldwide, and for you should have said, you know, been mea culpa, and it should have been a good joke, which is you're a comedian. It's funny. Oh, well, I wasn't even. You I were, just said, is it COVID related? <laughs> I just didn't know if it what, what it was. I thought it was a cupcake. No, remember I want to show you funnier. I will post this picture right now. Show them the squirrel. I have a squirrel. It's even funny. Oh, okay, so boy. there's there's a squirrel. Well, that looks, are you allowed to post that? It's a squirrel. It's a little it's not, more like a not pro, my friend. prolapse. Do you talk about this stuff all the time on this show? I think feel yeah. like I'm in a new territory. You haven't watched our show. I, not You're lately. Not a fan. I, I watch a lot of you know, pieces of it. I guess I've not gotten to the part where the anal prolapse comes in. Well, it's not. But, a, it's not a big part. Mostly that it's just to keep our minds off the fact that I left her at the circus. But anyway, <laughs> this is a squirrel with a prolapse anus. It looks like it. Yeah, it is. So I want to know. Like, here's what I want to know, and I'm asking you as a doctor. Yes. I went on Ethan's show. Mm -hmm. I went on H3, and he was very, you know, excited to talk to me about this. He let it run much longer than I would have let it run, the whole prolapse thing. I was trying to forget it. Yeah. And then he brought on this guy, Hunger. What, what's that guy's name? What's the guy's name? Do you guys remember his name? No one. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that my staff is so well. But I didn't realize that there is a sexual community. There's a there's a there's a line of preference, I guess. Yeah, there's a world. where people can actually, and I don't know that this is not it, it taken up in the squirrel community, <laughs> where they can actually do this. Yes. it's not a problem. Yes, where you can turn yourself inside out and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. There, there. I've seen that uh, your mom's Wait. house is it's your mom's house. They, they've gone way. At my mom's house. No, no, no. <laughs> this is Tom Segura's. Your oh, mom's house. oh, okay. They, they, I'm Bubba's sorry. doing the, it. The, <laughs> your grandmother yeah. can. Okay, can go ahead. Collapse her own. Okay, anus. what did you see? Uh, uh, they, they, they've been way into this for quite for years. Oh, so uh, I'm, I'm and, behind. And, no pun intended. Yeah, and they've, they like to show me things that make me ashamed and feel bad. And that this, that was a whole not, line uh, that they. Are you ashamed of seeing a the squirrel? The stuff that they showed me that was pretty extreme. No, this is and, for the children. And I, when, when I see that, it, it's nuts. But here's my thing: when <laughs> I see that, I don't know about squirrel <laughs> rectums, but when I see adult, you know, male and female with, that induce that, I just think that person's going to have a. I'm not a colorectal surgeon, but I have sent people to surgery for that many times. But w f when you say for that, yeah, the up until I did Ethan's show, yeah, this was explained to me like a problem where you know your name is hunger. Pardon me. His name is hunger. Oh, just hunger. Yeah. Hunger. Um, it, it, it was explained to me as a problem where your 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 innards are falling out. Correct. As you get older. Again, women particularly, they get prolapse of their vagina, of their uterus, and sometimes of the anus and the rectum. And when the rectum falls through, yeah. like the people like doing in this line right. of, of uh, practice, it can cut off its own blood supply. It can sort of, it, it's coming through a small What opening. are you doing with your fists? I'm showing an anus as with a prolapse through oh, it. Oh, and okay. it, it, and it <laughs> Is that the anus right this there? This is the anus. This also can we zoom in on the anus? Ready? So right. Oh. It's also Senor Francis. <laughs> he has an accent. <laughs> Do it because we're zooming the in on it. The anus has an accent. So right. So right. 
<laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, go ahead. You can speak with your ass. I, I'm just saying, Senor Wences. It's, it's the, uh, yeah, you know Senor Wences. You're my age, yeah, I know. Yeah, right, okay, me yeah. too. That I. And, so, um, it, it were. I always think, oh my God, if these people are not going to need an emergency surgery because of ischemia of the region, because of blood supply issues, eventually they're going to end up with a big surgery. These are big surgeries. They're not fun. But people are doing it. He So he brought this guy, Hunger, on the show. I know. Who, as a, you know? I know they're doing it. Did he make you do it? Did he do it for you in person? He went one, two, three. Like, I, I was a judge not on America's Got Talent. Not in person. On it video. was on a video. Oh. 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 What? oh We're why watching it. Why are we watching why? it? That's, that's from ah! just your mom's house, right? Or is that what, what he did? That's not no, my that's... mom's house. No. <laughs> Stop saying my but mom's house. How about house. the fact that this could be a line of talent for America's Got Talent? That's oh, You mentioned that. That all oh. blew my mind. Yeah. But why, how do you... The, oh, your daughter's are, quite serious about this. Yeah. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> they should have on OnlyFans America's Got Talent no, where people could do that. No, no, we just saw something Jacqueline. and I'm sure Jacqueline. Jeremy did that. Jacqueline. Jeremy, did you, you do that? No, no, hang on. Jack, use that oh, mind for good, please. Yeah. Just use that mind for good, please. <laughs> I can't hear you, Jeremy. Not for me, but I do... That like footage from Ethan's birthday. Ethan's birthday, yeah. Yeah, so he had that on. We're not showing that though. That's a little much, but that's no. the stuff that your mom's house shows, that kind of stuff all the time. To you. To me and goes, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> but but I'm not asking you what you think. No, I what know. What I'm saying is, because I know what I think. It's it's it seems wrong. Uh, don't don't yuck someone's yum. Yeah, There's yeah. no yum. Don't in that. judge. Let's do it non-judgmentally. Let's not judge. Non-judgmentally. I seems, am a judge. It's, <laughs> <laughs> see, keep yeah, keep, keep going down that path. You might, you might you might have something here. Can you imagine if you're long COVID at the end of it? You go, I can learn languages, yeah. and I can do that. No, thank you. You can prolapse on command. What, what if he tried? Yeah, you never, you don't know until you try. But ever since I saw that, I've mm -hmm. been, um, I'm trying? gonna be honest. You've been well, trying? no, I've been afraid. Like, uh, when you I, take a, when you have bowel movement, you're afraid. I almost, I've almost become constipated because yeah. I don't want to push. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. How do you know? You said it, it when you're older. It, it, I don't uh, want that to happen. It, it, I don't want to be on H3 with that talent. It, it, may, even though males I'm, tend to be, have more musculature in that area. So it really doesn't happen so me. from pushing. Those, those were males. It doesn't happen from pushing when during a bowel movement. It happens from more active sorts of things happening. Okay. M m be much larger things. <laughs> coming through and can i change a topic out. for a second i oh, didn't please, want to ask you God, about yes. something <laughs> go ahead okay ai because mm. you mentioned ai are you nervous about ai taking over the medical I, field? I interviewed a guy yesterday who was uh worried about transhumanism and i i i found myself not that worried about it i, I oh i thought you took the stand i just gauged based on your the headline there. yeah yeah that's people put the headlines i, I don't mm -mm. you have I, a lot of headlines i know i know put up a dr drew headline <laughs> no. tell me explain but i don't this. write them i don't write them what is this about what is that what is this about dr drew says building climate change resistance is existential for saint kitts and nevis why do you care about is that the caribbean i've never seen that in my life no and i don't is I don't it the even, wrong dr drew it must be <laughs> it must be oh maybe it's this dr drew that's Drew yeah. yeah. Carey. That's Drew yeah. Carey. Who's that? <laughs> Dr. Drew says building climate change resistant is existential for St. Kitts and Navy. Isn't that interesting? And I'm sure somebody attributed that to me. Is that Dr. Dr. Drew? Dr. Drew gives nursing students master class in resuscitation. That's not Dr. Drew. Oh, wait, that's a different... <laughs> He's a little... Yeah. Dr. Drew on job creation and crime. That is not Dr. That's not the right Dr. Drew, Dad. Do you know that Dr. Drew is the prime minister of St. Kitts? Ah, uh, that explains it. Now I know. Good for I'm I'm happy to share that. So when you took when you took that position as the prime minister of <laughs> Saint Kitts, do you we wanna, do our homework here. Do you want to take a more uh, a, a medical question? Calls. Or Whatever you guys, I'm at your service. Uh, at your service. We can even do. Have you ever seen? You said you've watched a little bit. Have you? Do you know who Lou is? In there, yeah. You do. I mean, I not well, but here he comes. A moment with Lou. <laughs> Play. Here we go. It's time for Lou, 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 Lou. It's a Lou moment. Like I know that he eats chips and he's right. walked in here a couple times. Lou, Lou, Lou. Why are you here, Lou? We want some fucking ship laugh, motherfucker. Lou, <laughs> punch it up, Lou. But hoopity do do. Hoopity do. Lou, please let me finish Lou. this. Umbrella in a can. And I gotta tell you, uh, uh, you're not on yet. You're not on. Now well, you're on. Nothing to say then. He's been talking for a couple of minutes. You know. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I, I was sitting in there 
as you saw earlier uh, uh, for a while, and and uh, my ass fell asleep. You're serious talking. And now I'm afraid it's going to start snoring. Or, so this is one of the issues. No, but actually the reason Lou wanted to come in today, yes. Lou, you did have a problem. Well, I had oh. I, I had a, uh, an issue. Well, I had to go to the doctor. Mm. And, and, and uh, this happened several years ago, but it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, I was feeling great. I was feeling fantastic. Uh, I went to sleep. I got up the next morning uh -huh. and my ass hurt. Were they, but like, it hurt. Let me just finish here, Dr. Drew. It hurt with a pain that I've never experienced in my life, ever. It was the most excruciating pain that I've ever had, and it would not let up. It would not stop. It went on all day, and I couldn't take it anymore, and I drove to the emergency room. I drove to the emergency and on the way down there, I was thinking the poor bastard that decided to become a doctor 15 years ago is surely going to regret that decision because he's got some exploring to sure, do sure sure right? very custom and right? i get in there and i'm in the waiting room and i'm i'm sweating with pain it was the most excruciating i couldn't go like this it was terrible it was the worst pain i've ever experienced finally the doctor came in after about 35 40 minutes and i was pacing and sweating and and uh, i told them my symptoms and he had a, uh, it was Dr. Ludwig, Dr. Ludwig, okay. his first name. And he had a very heavy, thick uh, German accent. Mm -hmm. And and I told him my symptoms and he said, I know what it is. Uh, I do a lot of accents. No, you don't. That was German. No, it wasn't. Okay. So I, he said, he said, what he said to me was this. He Wasn't said, this Dr. Drew, he said, moment? <laughs> he said, uh, you have a fichu. A fissure, yeah. And I heard fish hook. Oh. Because it made sense it, to me. It felt like that. Yeah. And I How said to him, sense? I Maybe said, fish hook makes sense. I got a fish hook up my ass. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, You got a fish hook up your ass? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I got a fish hook up my ass? <laughs> and he said, you got a fish hook? It's time for Lou. Lou, you're it's done. A okay. Like I know that he eats <laughs> chips and he Thank you, Lou. Good to meet you, Doc. Nice to meet you. Why are you here, Lou? We want <laughs> some fucking ship laugh, motherfucker. Lou, pump shit up. Lou, but hoopity do do. Oh, what's he got? I don't know. You got to be gone by the end of this Oh, another one? Umbrella and a can. Okay. It's a Lou moment. We got that. another one. Oh my gosh. I am going to give the other one he gave us away to a fan. I saw someone in the comments did ask for the other one. So I'm going to send that to them. Is that a normal thing, a uh, fisher? A fish fisher hook? is very common. What is that from? It can be just people are prone. Do you know, you, you get these cracks inside your mouth here, chelitis. You ever had that before? I haven't, these, but these, I've seen these people. unhealing who... things. It's, it's kind of like just those areas are prone to those sorts of things when From they get inflamed. From smiling too much in the winter. Mm, not really. It, it's it's the dryness and the yeast and those other things that can, your inflammation, it just gets going. Wow. And it's just prone to that in those areas. And uh, fissures, but they also can be part of inflammatory bowel disease. So you can have Crohn's disease and have Ooh. fissures or fistulas and that kind of thing too. What is the biggest misconception that uh, people have about their health and wellness that you, is there something? There's so many. There's so, there's so many. I, the one thing Lou just gave, gave an example of because pa patients come in with their story and they want to tell their whole story. And doctors often need only about 5% of the story. And then we have to kind of zero in on some questions we need answers. Like Drew said, Lou said, I'm going to tell, tell you my story. I would have asked, you know, where is it? How long? What quality of pain? Would anything make it worse? Anything make it better? That's much more important than that Lou was miserable all day. As much as it's terrible that Lou was miserable all day. Pa patients have misconceptions about what, that's why we sort of will interrupt. Start going, no, no, I need to, I need to hear this. Number one. Number two. There's a lot of confusion about wellness versus illness. They overlap, but they are very different topics. You know, well, it, it, uh, being perfectly well, like really taking care of yourself and proper diet doesn't guarantee you're not going to get an illness. Well, or an and illness is a, is, a, is a very broad, like you're taking care of yourself. You, you be, you're exercising. Yeah. You're probably eating properly. Yeah. But you can't lift your arms up in the air. And I have prostate cancer. 
And then it oh, nothing. Do you do? Yeah. I, and I had a prostatectomy. I'm 10 years post, 12 years post prostatectomy. And um, oh, I'm sorry. It's but, and in you're my good? family, and I'm good. And it's I've got Lynch syndrome, which puts me also at risk of uh, my DNA repair. It's a Jewish thing, also Ashkenazi Jew thing. The our DNA repair uh, mechanisms aren't so great, and so we're prone to certain GI tumors and things. So I have to get colonoscopies every year. But none of that. I mean, certainly my wellness practices helps, but doesn't guarantee much. I get a lot of colonoscopies too. What do you think I of that? I feel like your doctor likes doing it. You get more colonoscopies than I know anyone else. I just else. love. Uh, yeah. I just love. <laughs> Picture like, taking. And you like, you like the. Uh, I do like the, 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 the prostate being exam. put under. Is no, it, not well, the. The propofol. The propofol is what's propofol, cool. It's like, they go, like are it. you ready? Boom. <laughs> you're like, pow. You're just gone. It feels it's, great. It is good. Uh, I want to ask you what is, and not that we would be smirch any product, yeah. but Cologuard. Because uh, I did that. It, yeah, it's. Look, it's. You know, for those that don't know, I talk about it in my act a little bit, but I didn't want it during COVID. I was afraid to go into the doctor's mm -hmm. office. Cologuard, do you know what it is? No. Oh, it's a product where you uh, you shit in a box. They send you a to-go box. Oh, I do know this. Yes. And you shit in the box, and then and then you mail off your box of shit. Right. It's a very sensitive way to to detect cancer, and even maybe even some precancerous things. But it's not nearly as good as colonoscopy. It's good, and it's in my in my world again. Patients but, won't do colonoscopies. They go, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I, 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 I know symptoms. But you like, said you're mostly doing psychiatry, so why? No, no, I'm mostly doing, right now I'm doing straight medicine. Oh. Straight medicine. For years I did both, and now I'm doing straight medicine. Okay. But the shit in the box, I did it. Made yeah. me feel like a cat. I felt yeah. like a cat. It is like a litter box, yeah. Yeah, it is. And I do, I, I ordered a ton of them, so I have them all over the house. I, I, I think, <laughs> I, look, no one should get colon cancer today. Really, I, I should be exceedingly rare because of screening instruments like that and the colonoscopies. I mean, just people should do them religiously. And then they would back to our insurance conversation. They get into, is it cost effective? Is it enough? How often should people get this? And people should be at their liberty to decide with their doctor how often they want to get it. Like I said, I have Lynch and they're happy to pay for it every year for me because I am really at risk. And they don't want me to get the colon cancer because that would cost them a bunch of money. Yeah, knowing I, that. Okay, go ahead. I saw a ton of people now are also doing those full body MRIs yeah. or scans. Waste. To, you think that's a waste? You, you get literally almost nothing. Look, the anatomy is one little piece of the story of medicine. Why do you think we do blood work and do all kinds of tests on what's happening, what the bio, actual biology is? Medicine is a, is a biological practice. The anatomy is one little piece that tells us something about what's going on biologically. The only thing you can't detect uh, by other means, much less expensive, actually much more where we know what we're doing and what we're predicting, things like coronary calcium screens and a physical examination and you know treadmill testing. These, we know what we're doing with these things. You see some coronary activity on a, on a full body MRI scan, you're gonna go up on a treadmill anyway. Mm -hmm. The only two things I can think of that you can detect in a whole body MRI that you cannot necessarily detect any other way would be an early brain tumor and an early kidney tumor. That's it. Those are the only two things. And you'd have to get those scans really, God, every couple of years to keep screening for those two things that are very rare. So, um, listen, keep doing the good work. I think you've... you've uh treaded on uh you know and and i think it's th it's this weight of or this balance of medicine and broadcasting mm -hmm. you know that opens you up more you i know? think so i think because people love to attack me they just do and but just by virtue of being on anything yeah. you know I, I, yeah. I i've talked about this many times you know if you're on tv you yeah. know when i shave my head you know uh, people felt it was okay to come up to me even not thinking they were being mean, going, why would you shave your head? You look so much better with hair. Like who walks up to a stranger and says that? So <laughs> just by virtue of what you do, yep. it's a medical opinion yep. or a diagnosis or something that you're doing. You've opened yourself up to attack, not only you, your family and your whole community. So you tread, you're in a, a dangerous, but fun and hopefully satisfying. It, it is satisfying. I mean, I'm I, for till about 2010, I was always like, oh, I don't really just, let's just, I'll, I'll slide the media in here and here and again, the rest just leave me alone to practice medicine. 
But around 2010, I'm like, God, you've been doing media a long time. Maybe you ought to kind of try to focus on it and to do something worthwhile, do something good. Try to use media to do good. That's always been in the back of my head. And so I've been doing more f more of it. Uh, I got to say the attacks are about the same. Either way. If whatever. you're out there, you've opened the door. Yeah. There's no such thing as not. Well, yeah. I always listen to you. You know, people ask him, like, he's, you're very open about being on medications. He will never say what medications he's on mm. because he feels like whatever works for him might not work oh, for someone course. else. And you of have course. to go to a medical professional. Yes. So you putting yourself out there and giving advice that people then take seriously or decide to take your advice without ever going and getting checked out or going to their doctor. We never do that. Never. I, I, I always say in cases like this, here's how it, it's approached. Yeah. Now go see your doctor. This is not medicine. This is not, you know, people come up to me all the time mm -hmm. and ask me these extremely complicated psychiatric questions on the street. Mm -hmm. And literally the thought bubble over my head is if I had a team of people, we, we'd make some progress in about five years and they want fix me now. Right. And it's like, no, that's just not, that's not how this works. It's not how people work. It takes time, takes work, takes effort, takes some, often some professional, professional supervision. And then people can get better and they get, and treatment does work. That's the, that's the really big message I want to give people is that we, we are very effective with particularly psychiatric care these days. We're very good with, if you talk to, do you have talked to Peter Atia yet? No. He, he's talking about medicine 3.0. He's like, you know, we medicine 1.0 is essentially <laughs> religion and evil humors. And 2.0 was essentially post the bacterial understanding and some surgical interventions. And he thinks 3.0 is about living long well. And how do we, because we've really, we, we do so well with most things in terms of preventing things, in terms of treating things. We do a very good job with that. And it's really about living well as long as possible. And part of that is living well psychologically, philosophically, spiritually. And I and, and we, as you've said a couple of times during this show today, we live in a time of some spiritual malady. There's something... It's we're, angry out there and it's dark yeah. out there. And listen, uh, 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 having this opportunity, the fact, first of all, thank you for coming on. Pleasure. Has kind of opened my eyes more to who you are, not just what you're about or what you say. And I, I think your intentions seem to be always in the right place. Just, With, uh, how they're received yeah. is anybody's... I can't control that. But, yeah. you know, I've had this incredible experience, both... I, I had an experience that doctors aren't actually allowed to have anymore. Like, because now you're either a hospital intern, you're, a, you're, a, you're an intensivist, or you're a hospitalist, or you're an outpatient medical doctor, or you're a psychiatrist, or you're an addiction medicine doctor. I did all of that simultaneously for about 20 years. And so it's given me this extremely broad understanding of the human experience. And I'm just so grateful for it. I just want to give it back as much as I can. What are your kids doing? Different things. You know, one's not in medicine. No, one, one's going to go into psychology, though. He's sort of wants to be a therapist type. Okay. Uh, and my daughter's interested in this area, but she's a writer. And my uh, son's a lawyer. So great. Doing different stuff. So they're triplets. Um, I had triplets. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. it's crazy. I think that's amazing. Before that we go, uh, we plugged. Uh, we plugged here. We plug everything. So in. the main thing is uh, go to drew.com. All the the stuff is there. But Dr. TV is where you can get announcements for our streaming show, which my wife would kill me if she produces it and runs it and directs it and everything. And and it's her sort of baby. And I, I really enjoyed. It's a, it's so wild to be able to do this thing with my family. It's been crazy. Yeah, it's, isn't it interesting? I love it. Uh, and. Uh, and so that's Dr. Drew. Ask Dr. Drew with not that Dr. Drew, but me. No. <laughs> We're going to put all these links. We'll okay. have all these links. It's Dr. Drew TV. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, usually at three o'clock. Just look for the announcements there. Right. And knowing that you did that, I thought we'll, we'll close with a, we, I, I put up a thing in my stories yesterday if they wanted, if we could take a call. Can we take one sure, call and we'll close oh, with one I'll call? Take a couple calls if you, you have the, the call, thing. Call's my, a, my oh, jam. This is your jam? Yeah. I don't know. We don't do that so much on the show because you have, uh, I'm not, I don't want to say what the person, well, they're probably not listening at this moment because this is not, this is uh, recorded, ah. but uh, you don't know what people are going to say. Can you hear yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's a, having a screener is an Can important thing. I do. Uh, well, this is not screened, okay. except for the fact that. Hello? Hello. Um, this is uh, how Howie Mandel does stuff. It's the podcast. You obviously wanted to call in because today's guest is Dr. Drew. Oh wow! Hi, hi, Howie. Hi, Doctor Drew. Yeah, man. What is your name? My name is Chris hey. with an S. Uh, I'm a longtime listener, first time caller. <laughs> Thank you, Chris with an S. 
What's um, happening? Who does the last I have letter? a I have a problem. Okay. And it really it really started when I was the first time I remember it happening was I was eight. We went to go see Weird Al was my first concert. Oh wow! We went to the fair. Interesting. Yeah, it was a great time. Um, have you seen his new movie? Well, that I have on on it's, on it's awesome. uh, what's it called Roku? Yeah, that was on Roku. Yeah. I saw I, was it, just, I saw it on a plane. Did you see that, that there was a guy that played me in the movie? I don't remember. Not, not was... that played me. He said, uh, I think it was the who wanted him. To, somebody wanted, somebody famous wanted to be his opening act. And they said, no, oh, yeah. I've already given it to yes. Howie Mandel. Yes, I, I was his opening act. <laughs> oh, oh, that's well, a true, so that's inside a true, baseball. that's so inside baseball. Interesting. Anyway, uh, a lot of the, a lot of inside stuff was going on, and I was trying to keep up with some of his, even who he casted and different things and stuff was very interesting. Yeah, that was a really good movie. I you know him? So too. We had I, him. We had I, him on this podcast. I don't think I've ever met him. I don't think I have. Oh well, go check yeah. out it. At, at, uh, go check out the episode with uh, Doctor Drew. Anyway, okay, uh, Chris Lynn a... S. Chris Lynn S. What's happening? What happened after yes. Weird Al? How does that even? Well, so that was the yes. first time I really like letter. experienced it, mm. and it's happened. Uh, a couple times a year, pretty much since then. Um, just to give you, I'm not vaccinated, uh, which I guess that doesn't really make sense since it's happened. When we haven't, so heard, long, we haven't heard your problem yet. But the point I've is been, that the point is that you you said when you went to see a, a Weird Al concert in a. I think he's going to say he's had some palpitations. That's what I'm going to predict here. Yes, go on with your heart. Yeah. So I I just I've been having what's that some issues and I've been wanting to talk to friends about it. I feel like it's a common problem. I would think so. Um, I'm, I tried talking to my parents. I, I know they care about me, but I don't really, I don't really have the right answers. Chris, and, you haven't, you haven't um, told us what it is yet. What describe yeah, what it is. It really, it starts in the, it happens more so in the morning. Chris, but it also, Chris, Chris, yeah. stay with me. What is the symptom? Just describe the symptom straight out. This is way, okay. this, this is, is all day in my practice, all day. Really? <laughs> yeah. This is what you said yeah. that Lou yeah. was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody does that. <laughs> Everybody does that. He's nothing, yeah. nothing unusual about Chris doing well, it. But, uh, but I, I seem like an asshole symptoms. going, Chris, yeah, just so give it, me the symptoms. <laughs> mostly in the morning, but. Chris, I mean, Chris, no, I don't care about morning, timing. But... I don't care. Just what, just give, just describe to me what you experienced ew, ew, when God. this thing happens. That's a cough. It's a cough. I know, okay. in my face. Um, no, I didn't cough in your face. Oh my God, my wife accuses me of that all the time. No, hey. I just, I'm not sick. I just, uh, I was just, uh, um, like Howie, remnant, but. People, people get sick once in a while. Okay. No, but I don't, I, I'm not sick. It, this is something that it starts in the morning. Oh yeah, I have that and, too. And you know, I've had, I had H1N1. A, a, and by the way, I had H1N1, I do terrible with viruses. And I had H1N1 and it was brutal. And I've what had- What was a, worse for you? H1N1, H1N1 was the worst. It was- More than COVID. Oh my God, it was brutal. It killed tons of people and young people mostly. And so I had a bad How case of that. How many people died of COVID? Uh, young it was, people. It was over a million. Over a million, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, H1N1 H one was three hundred thousand. But I think that three hundred thousand was worldwide, and it's actually how many million worldwide? Five, ten, something. I don't know, millions of people. But the point is that it, it was a worse illness for young people, while COVID was a, not a worse illness for young people. Uh, and I've had a cough ever since in the morning. Ten years. See, see, yeah. Just don't cough on me, and I you didn't. don't even cover well. You do this thing. What My is mouth this was thing? closed. You didn't cough with your mouth closed. I did. Cough pocket. Do the cough pocket. Cough pocket? Cough pocket. Anyway. Chris? We have, we have that clip <laughs> from Weird Al pulled up. Oh, we do? Yeah. Wait, but Chris so had a question. Oh, look at this. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Led Zeppelin uh, is thinking about getting back together, but they say the only way they'll do it is if they can open up for you on tour. Uh, I mean, well, that's sweet, but yeah, I already offered the gig to Howie Mandel. So. There it is. Boom. There it is. Drop the okay. Mic. Yeah, but okay. this is. Do you remember Dr. Demento back in the day? Yeah, I worked oh. with him. Do you, you know? Did? I worked with. Well, because uh, Dr. Demento and uh, Weird Al had the same manager. Oh, that's right. Yes. Do you know him? Did, I, I don't, but I knew that. And was I a did kid. a TV show. I did a pilot at NBC. God, I was such a fan of his Sunday night show. I, I listened yeah. to that radio. You yeah. guys were on the. The first time I did your show with Adam Carolla, you were on the same network as him on that. Was it Westwood One? Oh, Isn't that uh, where he did. The first I time think, I did Love Line. You know, he, I think, was on KLOS, and we were in the same building. You're right. Something. Yeah, yeah. I remember. You don't probably don't remember, but I did. You, I do remember you coming. Yeah, we yeah. wouldn't have met otherwise. It's yeah. through, through that. Anyway. And um, 
We're taking a call. Okay, so Chris, who's, who's Chris. This? so get to the symptom, buddy. Yeah. Here we go. The symptom okay, so was. happens in the morning. No, 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 no. Just describe the symptom. Here we go. I feel, okay. here's what I feel. It feels. Um, Howie? Yeah. You're is talking this, to Doc. Is this on the podcast? Like, is this going to be on the You're podcast? on the podcast now. And yes. you're talking yeah. while you're yes. asking me. You're talking if, to If you're Dr. talking further, you're agreeing to be on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Do you okay. agree to be I, on the pod? Do you agree I'm to be actually, on the podcast? I don't really feel comfortable. Okay. Okay. Um, asking the question All right. anymore. Okay. Is it, <laughs> w- it, did it have something to do with your heart? Just out of curiosity? He doesn't want to talk on the thing. Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't. I, I don't. It didn't. I don't really want to talk about All right, it's fine. So, it's fine, Chris. I do thank do you, not. Thank you so much for your. You time got it. Though. And listen, Chris, do not do anything you don't want to do. You should always have consent for everything. It's up to you. So don't worry. You're fine. Not describing something that was personal to you. But can I? Can if it just in, in the case it was palpitations? Can I tell you something? Okay. Okay. Palpitations are very very normal, and they're like bum bum. Bump, 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 and then your heart stops. It's called a compensatory pause, and that is normal. And people sometimes feel very uncomfortable with that. It feels like the, it catches their breath even a little bit, and, and they don't like it, and they can have anxiety around it and focus on it. And it can get going a lot. If it's going a lot, sometimes they'll treat it. Uh, that's different than anything irregularly irregular, like bup, 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 that's a problem. And fast rhythms are a problem, very fast, particularly over 150. That's when you really want to see a doctor for sure. And we live in a strange time when uh, pal- just palpitations generally, we could kind of dismiss in young people, but both COVID and in young males, the vaccine have sort of made it a different issue. And now we evaluate it a little more carefully because it can I be have associated AFib. with- Not from the COVID, not from the vaccine. Yeah. Does, is it, is it, does that usually happen in the morning? Um, it, 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 you know, can happen. It, it, it can have patterns to it. You know, Are you, you know, is your issue heart palpitation? Well, that, he doesn't want to talk about it. Don't make him talk about it. But he said but no yes before. or no. No. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so we gave a little treatise on heart palpitation. So right. there you go. Well, thank you for but your call. It, but, it is, but it is important to point out that we used to really just go, eh, normal heart, no big deal. But now COVID and vaccine, both in young males, we have to take it a lot more seriously. Because COVID causes a problem in the heart too. When I, when I had COVID, I was sick as hell. I was climbing up some stairs, 102 degree fever. I was taking my pulse and I go, my pulse is 58, 60. This thing is affecting the heart for sure. I, I knew right then that climbing had stairs with sixty and one hundred and two fever. My my pulse should have been one hundred and ten, and it was fifty eight, sixty, and I thought, like, oh yeah, this is myocarditis for sure. Which is you know, I'd hate to be a doctor that I can sit there and bother. I'd love ignorance Diagnose is bliss. Yourself. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Chris, did you get an answer to anything? I I feel really good about my call. Good. Okay. That's how we want you to feel. We want you to yeah. feel leaving well. You reacted right when I said I have prostate cancer. Wait, you, had a, you had a powerful yeah, reaction. Yeah, I did. Bye, Chris. Right, good, I didn't, Thank I, you for I didn't know. And you I, if you if you got if you got to get prostate if you got to get a cancer, that's the one to get. <laughs> that's the one. You don't and, have to get it, but I, well, how are you diagnosed? Just a regular uh, checkup. A really interesting story. When I had H one N one, I was so toxic. My wife, when I recovered, was like, "Well, that wasn't normal. Something's wrong with you." And I went, "No, I." had... I had an infectious disease doctor following me. It was H1N1. It's a terrible illness. I, you know, it's horrible. She goes, no, no, no. I'm going to make an appointment for you for a physical. So she makes an appointment. With, I, before that, I was seeing cardiologists and pulmonologists and things when I needed to, that kind of thing. And I go in and he goes, oh, you know, I was always monitoring my cholesterol and my PSA and all these things. And uh, he goes, oh, your PSA went from a one to a four this year. And I was like, yeah, well, mm, interesting. I bet it'll go back down. Let me, let me come back in six months. We'll test it again. He goes, nah. I didn't feel comfortable. I go, look, one of the worst things for you too is for doctors to treat special people specially. That's how you get bad care. If your doctor is in any way changed in his or her approach to you because you're a public person, change doctors immediately. You need to be treated with the standard of care just like everybody else because it adulterates our our decision-making if we are not doing what we do always the same way, the way we know how to do it. So I accused him of, because of, I was a peer and he knew who I was. And I was like, oh, you're, come on, you're, you're being too aggressive. No, I'm not. Just see a urologist. I go see the urologist. He goes, yeah, you probably shouldn't be here. He, you're right. But here, take these antibiotics, this anti-inflammatory for a couple of weeks. We'll recheck your PSA. Doesn't come down. He goes, well, yeah, yeah, let's do it again. More antibiotics, more, more anti-inflammatories. Still doesn't come down. And he goes, well, 
by the book, I have to biopsy you. And I'm like, God damn it. You see what happens? You see what happens when you're too aggressive? Now I'm ending up with a biopsy. I, I should have come back in six months, had my PSA retested, and we could talk about it then. Biopsy, cancer. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. There's a great case study for doctors using their judgment, right? I'll buy the books. I could have come back in six months or 12 months and been retested, but it was there. They had an instinct, a judgment that something was not right. And that's why you go to the doctor for their judgment, for making the right call in the right situation. I was afraid they were being a little too aggressive because of, you know, they were nervous. They or saved whatever. your life. They, they, you know, I was diagnosed very early. I went on active surveillance after that for a few years uh, where I was biopsied every few months, every six months, which was a joy. Uh, and then it's, I, my grade was always kind of low, but it started, the volume expanded and they were like, all right, take it out. That was that. It's good uh, times. Well, just stay healthy. We need you. That is the plan, my friend. And How old are you? I'm 65. Uh, you're just a kid. Yeah. I'm going to be 68 next week. Didn't, didn't you feel different at 65? Is that where you felt? I felt tall for my age. <laughs> I feel I feel different. No, I you think, loved it. You went to Denny's. I go to Denny's. Yeah. There's one right up the street here. I yeah. saw. Well, I was driving around in circles. He I loves the, the senior discounts. He takes I, advantage I, of a I, good I'm, senior I'm, discount. I, we should go. <laughs> I'll go. Let's hang out. Absolutely. I'm, I really I'm like you. In. Let's hang out. I, 100%. I'm in. Okay, when you got Thank a minute. You, appreciate you, it. You, do you live out in Pasadena? I do. Don't, don't give your address. No, I live in Pasadena. Yeah. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll hang. Anyway, that's Dr. Drew. Go to HowieMandel.com to get merch. Comment. Subscribe. And uh, thanks for listening and watching. I really appreciate it. And so does my daughter, don't you? I do. Exactly. I do appreciate use, it. Use that mind for good, please. I'll try. Okay. <laughs> no butthole stuff. <laughs> that was great. Oh, are you going to ask me?